Welcome to the Culture Think Tank, where we discuss the trends and analytics of culture facing us today. Our goal is to help provide insights and best practices organizations and leaders can use to strengthen their culture during today's new normal. I'm Will Enstrom, and with me here is my partner, Delise Crimmins. Good morning, Delise. Good morning, Will. How are you? I'm doing well, and I'm very excited by our guest today. Ann Rhodes was the Vice President of the People Department at Southwest Airlines when Southwest was rated as one of the top 10 companies to work for in the United States. She is the author of the national bestseller, Built on Values, and is the president of People Inc., a consulting firm specializing in organizational culture. We appreciate you joining us today. Great to be here. Will, I'm super excited to have Ann Rhodes here today. Ann and I have worked together for 30 years. We both worked at Southwest Airlines back in the 1980s and 1990s in the people department. And then Ann went on to be the vice president of culture and people at Promise Corp, which is Doubletree Hotels. And then she and I joined forces again in 1997 to help create JetBlue Airways, which launched in 1999 out of New York. So she and I have spent our careers together and she has taught me more about culture and about people than I can imagine. So it is my great pleasure to introduce Ann Rhodes. And you've been a national leader in the world of corporate culture for your entire career. There are likely some challenging times that you've seen. I imagine none like this. What's the best advice that you can give to leaders today to help them maintain their culture during this highly unusual time in our country? It's been so interesting watching various leaders and how they have responded um, during this difficult time. One of the things that I have noticed is that the leaders who are really great leaders come out during this time and, and tend to do what they always do well, which is communicate. So it sounds like a simplistic answer, but communication is the key, especially because your people are no longer with you for the most part, they're at home. They need to be constantly updated. And one of my favorite um, examples is the Marriott CEO recently did a video. And if you haven't seen it, we posted it at People Inc. on our website. And it's one of the most impactful videos I've ever seen a CEO do. Um, and he sent it to hundreds of thousands of their employees in Marriott globally. And it, what it does is it makes this real. It shows you his concern. It shows you that he, while he is being very, very transparent, he also, in some cases, can hardly get through the script because he cares so much. And he talks about the values of Marriott over 75 years. And I believe that other CEOs, that if they use videos, they're more impactful than just sending out a script or an email. And I've watched it all week and last two weeks and looked at great examples of it. And the other thing I would say is not only to do it fairly frequently, we're doing it on the boards I sit on, we are actually doing it weekly because so much changes in a week. But the other thing we found out was after we do the videos is people want a chance to have Q&A. So we also have created a way for them to give us their questions and we actually answer them either by email, the CEO from the CEO, or we actually put the answers on the next week's video. Very important. It's also important to remember whatever your values are. Uh, for example, I sit on a board called Regis uh, Corporation and we have 52 different brands of hair salons. We had 49,000 employees. We've just recently become, uh, the majority of our salons are now franchised. And one of our values has been caring. So one of the things we decided during this uh, tough time of furloughs for the, all of our employees, one of the majority of our employees, one of the things we, we wanted to do, and as a board, we talked about this because it is expensive, because caring is a value. One of the things we carried during the furlough is we are paying for everyone's um, benefits, healthcare benefits. So I think it's important you show your values in various ways during this time too. That's that's great. I, it sounds like, especially that Marriott, Marriott example, that there is empathy being shown and caring. I remember at Southwest Ann when Herb Kelleher used to go do those town hall meetings once a quarter. And I think during this time of tumult and fear and anxiety, that having those town hall meetings weekly makes a lot of sense. I think it, it helps quiet people just a little bit. And you know, it isn't that if some CEOs have told me, well, I'm afraid they will get concerned. Well, the truth of the matter is they just want honesty and they want you to be transparent. You, and they want, they don't be afraid to say, I don't have all the answers. It's changing on a daily basis. But what I will do is tell you what I know and it will be very factual and we'll do it once a week. So we've set up monthly, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, weekly meetings 
on right. Monday of every meeting, not only with the board, but with employees. And they are, all of them are tuning in. So the majority of them, so we know that they have been impactful and people are looking forward to them. We also have a way for them to send us their questions and we give them the answers to the best of our knowledge. What do you think the biggest struggle for a leader, like a line level leader would be during this time? I think not being concerned. You know what, what happens with line level leaders is they have their own issues and their own fears. And I think sometimes it is better for them to think about the people they manage than worrying about their own fears. And they, they're very real. I mean, everyone is um, losing money in their 401ks, there are all kinds of things are happening to them personally. And the one advice I give them is to think about your people. First of all, it takes um, the worries away from yourself sometimes, but it also is the right thing to do. And remember, no matter what you do, those values that are on the wall, you have to live those in the tough times like the good times. And remember, those behaviors are critical. They will watch how you behave in the tough times almost more than they watch how you behave in the good times. And so continue to behave in a way that mirrors those values that are so important to you. And be frank, but don't be an alarmist. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think when you said that um, sometimes leaders are afraid that uh, it'll, they'll create fear. I think in this world of fear, the more communication we give, it, it does help to quell fear. And something we did after 9-11 um, at JetBlue when we had just started our, our airline, we actually send out the scripts for all of our line players to have. And we also send out Q and A's for them because we, we actually knew what the majority of questions might, uh, the frequent, frequently asked questions would be. So we actually send out the answers. So everyone was saying the same thing. I think scripting it for your line players is also a very good idea. Okay. What other advice would you have for leadership during this time? I, one of the things that I tell them to do is think about ideas. You know, a lot of people are now working at home that never worked at home. Give them some instructions on how to work at home. We have started doing that with some of our employees and assigning them duties. Get them used to, you know, Delish, yesterday you and I talked about it and you talked about how every day because you work from your offices at home, how you actually lay out the day hour by hour for you, it's probably minute by minute knowing you, but um, for some people, hour by hour is enough. And I do that when I'm home. I lay out what I have to get done that day. I'm not as good as you probably in that I don't do it minute by minute. But I, I do think telling people how to work at home, we've started doing that. And people are very thankful for that because they just aren't used to that but you have to get in a routine like you do when you go to work and getting people to practice that i think the world will be forever changed uh, after this so if we can get people to understand that you can get as much accomplished at home i told you the story yesterday about a coo who called me from a big company and said my gosh i've been measuring how much i get done today and it's only 80 percent of what i normally get done what do you think well, <laughs> she called, that was Monday and Friday, she called and said, well, I'm getting 85 now, it's okay. So <laughs> she's moving up every day. But I do think you have to be as productive, but you have to learn how to do that. It does take some time. I'm sure it took you some time when you started working at home. Sure, and, and there, I like kind of the sharing ideas, the communities of learning where we can come together and, and share different ideas. A, a friend of mine has a, a folder for each day of the week, Monday through Friday and throughout the day, He'll put whatever paper he needs to in whichever folder for the day. And then that way I don't need to worry about Wednesday's folder on Tuesday. I'll worry about Wednesday's folder on Wednesday. So that's been a helpful tip for me as well. Great idea. Yeah, it, it helps. What about, so of all the things that you've seen, you're in contact with so many organizations, you're on so many boards. What's the one thing that you've learned from this to date that might help someone who's struggling to maintain their culture during this crisis? I think that, keeping those values alive. One of the things we do is, for instance, at JetBlue, we have long before virtual res agents, uh, res, res centers were in vogue. We created 20 years ago, um, our res centers are all at home. And we started the first one in Utah. And so a lot of mothers with, new, with many big families, um, for the most part, Mormon moms, 
uh, they actually learned to work at home and we instructed them on how to do that. And today we are winning awards and we are one of the most, in terms of just sheer productivity, one of the highest in the country. But we had learnings through that. And one of the things we learned is to constantly stay in touch with them, make sure that they know exactly all the highlights of the day. So at the end of the day, the head of the reservation center I actually will send two or three lines just talking about what happened that day. Um, she also was very good about bringing people in quarterly. We thought people should come in and meet with one another. We also thought that every day when they turn on their computers, we ought to have any critical information for them appear first, along with, by the way, at the bottom of the computer, we have the values running all day to remind people that regardless of the situation or where you're working, you should be living those values. So one of the things I learned and that I think is critical is communication is not a soft word. Communication is key to being successful in this kind of environment. Great. And I like the idea of video conferencing uh, versus just a, a script or a text. It really is so much more impactful because you can see that people really feel um, how they feel and the really great leaders are not afraid to have people see them as vulnerable. They're going through the same fears that you are. Remember, they're, they're over a company with hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands like Marriott employees. And they feel and they fear what will happen to the company. So you have to and you show that when you do a video versus just sending a script. I think a script is too easy. I think great leaders really can show how they feel and they can be living one of the values of caring um, and also high integrity. Um, when you do the video versus just sending a script. Yeah, I also think there's one thing they could do that just an idea I had today. When you come out of this, there are a number of issues that will present themselves that they have not had perhaps before. For instance, I think a lot of people that work at home are going to ask to continue doing that. And there are CEOs that have never done that. And to them, I, we have one right now we're talking to on a daily basis. And he just can't get over putting his CFO at home, who is a woman who has asked to be at home. Because now that she's been home with the children, even though she's still very productive and doing her job, she believes that she could do it on a permanent basis. But he just can't buy that. So we're working through some of those issues. And I think if the CEOs were to think about the issues that are going to arise after this is over and to ask their people to be thinking about solutions now, that gives it more of a positive sense. And maybe there will be solutions that that CEO never thought of or the president or whoever's leading the organization. I think some of, we ought to think about what happens when we're out of this and what are some of the problems and issues that may arise and how can we ask people now to think of potential solutions when we return to a normal work environment? It's, it's a great thought. And you and I have, have struggled getting HR leaders throughout our career to think differently and to think in a flexible way. And suddenly the world is making us uh, deal in flexibility. So it's going to be interesting to see how people respond. I heard, I heard from a teacher today and she said that she gave the kids one project while they were off and they have to present a solution to one of the biggest world problems when they come back from their break. And if there's a product to be developed, they need to develop the product that will solve it. And if not, the solution. And I thought, wow, what a great thing to ask people to do. But why wouldn't that work in a corporate environment, too? Why can't we think of all the issues we're going to have and think of the solutions before we have the issues? That's a great idea. We've, we've talked about that transitioning back. I think two things will happen. To your point, people might want to work from home. And then those who don't, there will be a transition going back into the workforce and saying, all right, I've been able to pat around in my pajamas and flip flops for the last two months. Now I have to put normal clothes on and, and work in a <laughs> more controlled environment. So there's going to be transition all over the place for us. Well, it was interesting when Google had the issue, they they actually had a number of young people who lived in San Francisco and to get to their office took quite some time. So they actually had started hiring buses to bring them and they give them different work schedules. They can figure out their own work schedule. One thing they learned was when they do assignments and they give people projects that are due on X date, they will always finish them. And so when they started asking for flexible hours and for uh, a opportunity to work from home in their places, so they don't have to commute that hour from San Francisco or it may, may, may even be over an hour. 
they found out that by assigning due date, projects with due dates that they ended up getting as much done and so they've made it permanent. They did it on a trial basis and now they made it permanent. Um, so there are a lot of things that we can start um, looking at from other organizations that, that are perhaps a little bit more flexible in, in what they allow people to do that now I think um, we're going to at least entertain. I don't think we did that before. A little or some cool. people reticent. <laughs> yeah, a little forced flexibility. Right. Well, Ann, thank you so much. As usual, you have great stories, great insights, and uh, we might call you back in a couple of weeks to see if you could share more of your stories and, and thought leadership with us in such a meaningful way. Thanks so much, y'all. Stay safe. Thank you again. As we're approaching today's segment, we always like to summarize kind of what we heard and the best practices. And I think if we take all that we've learned from you, I, I think there are four big focus points. One is communication is key. and and as leaders and as organizations, we need to get, communicate in a way that connects people. So video is, is critical. And also making sure that we're providing the opportunity for feedback and Q&A. I think that closing the loop is going to be important in order to keep people connected and also making them feel a part of the culture. As far as focus being the second point that I think is important is that as an organization, as leaders, line leaders, whatever it may be, we need to focus on people and the values versus focusing on the fears and making sure that we're helping people get used to working from home, because the more that we can focus on helping them get used to working from home, the better off we're gonna be and, and, and the quicker we're gonna be able to get back to productivity. And the final point that I think you're raising that we're starting to hear is that the re-entry into the workforce or into the office environment is going to be some challenges. And I think what we're learning now is flexibility is key and as we start to re-enter into the office work environment, we just can't assume that it's going to be normal. Everything's just going to be as usual before this environment event. And that we're going to have to start to address the situation where people are going to be, I proved I can work from home. I'm more efficient from home. As you said, there's commute times and there's also other family, uh, you know, family conflicts or family needs that may make people better suited and actually more efficient from working from home. So I think... I think that's going to be something that is going to be fascinating to discuss and look at as we get closer to the point where we can get back to a, a normal and then also start to discuss how are we going to address these situations when people are going to say, I, I, can, I can work from home now, and how are we going to think through the need for flexibility. Please join us tomorrow. We will be speaking with Bill Petrella, the CEO of the Hotel Emma in San Antonio. We'll be discussing the steps he's taking to maintain his culture during this time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Will. Stay safe, y'all. Stay safe. Thanks, guys.